In this lecture, we'll demonstrate the steady state sinusoidal analysis of a circuit that contains an unknown node voltage. Because the Texas Instruments TI-89 calculator is so popular with electrical and computer engineering students, we'll once again demonstrate how to use this device to perform the necessary computations to analyze the circuit. Well, for this lecture, we'll take a look at a circuit that has a sinusoidal voltage source, a resistor, an inductor, and two capacitors. The voltage source has a frequency of 2,000 radians per second, an amplitude of 4 volts, and a phase of 40 degrees. The resistor has a resistance of 6 ohms, the inductor has an inductance of 2 millihenries, and the capacitors have capacitances of 1 third and 1 fourth millifarads. For our analysis of this circuit, we'd like to determine the current flowing upward through the resistor. Now to convert this circuit to a phasor voltage and complex valued impedances, we'll first note that the frequency for the sinusoidal source is 2000 radians per second. Once we note that, the next thing we'll do is specify the phasor voltage as a complex value with an amplitude of 4 and a phase equal to 40 degrees. The impedance for the inductor is then determined as the product of J times the radian frequency, 2000 times the inductance, which is 2 times 10 to the negative third. Now because this 1 third millifarad capacitor is in series with the inductor, and because we aren't trying to determine the voltage across either of these elements individually, for this analysis, we can combine these two elements into a single impedance by summing their individual impedances. Now for this capacitor, the impedance is 1 over J times the radian frequency times the capacitance. We can then sum those two impedances to obtain a single equivalent impedance for the two elements in series. So that would be J times 4 minus, if we put the uh, J in the numerator, minus J times 3 halves. If we work that math out, we'll get J times 2.5, and that's the equivalent impedance for these two elements in series. Next, the impedance for the resistor is simply its resistance independent of the frequency of the sinusoidal driving functions. Finally, the impedance for the other capacitor is 1 divided by J times the radian frequency times its capacitance, and if we work this math out, we can reduce this to negative J times 2. Now at this point, we can redraw this circuit in terms of the phasor voltage and these complex impedances. And now we can analyze this circuit with any method we would use for a resistive circuit with DC sources. The only difference here is going to be that the voltage and all of these impedances are in general complex valued. Now for this circuit I'd like to define the bottom node as ground and then use the node voltage method to solve for the voltage at this top node which I've labeled as V1. If I apply Kirchhoff's current law at this node, I'll get this following equation. We'll have the current flowing out through this path is V1 minus 0 divided by Z1. The current in this direction is V1 minus 0 divided by Z2. And the current in this direction is V1 minus Vs divided by Z3. And all of those currents must sum to 0, so I come up with this equation. I can then solve this equation for V1 and then use that node voltage V1 to solve for the current I, which would be, since it's flowing in this direction, it would be 0 minus V1, or negative V1, divided by Z2. Now at this point we could use several tools, such as a calculator or a software package like MATLAB, to solve for the unknown voltage V1 and this unknown current I. And because the TI-89 calculator is a very popular tool,
tool for students studying circuits, I'd like to finish this example by once again demonstrating how to use this calculator to solve for the unknown voltage V and ultimately the unknown current I. Now one of the reasons I like to focus on this calculator, in subsequent lectures we'll be looking at circuits that are a little more complex, maybe they'll have more than one unknown node voltage. In this calculator the methods we'll use for, the, for solving for this single node voltage will apply in a very convenient way for multiple node voltages. Now to use this calculator, the first thing I'll, wind, I'll do and demonstrate to you is I'll take the source voltage phaser and I'll store that into memory and I'll call that memory variable Vs. Then I'll store the impedance Z1 into a memory variable I'll call Zz1. Now I'd prefer of course to use a variable called Z1 but within this calculator that variable name is reserved for other uses. Next I'll store the impedance Z2 into the variable I'll call ZZ2 and then I'll store the impedance Z3 into a variable I'll call ZZ3. Now after storing each of these quantities I'll then use a utility called C solve or complex solve to solve this equation for V1. I'll enter the equation just as I've written it here on this screen. And after doing that, I'll use that result to solve for the desired current I as negative V1 divided by Z2. Well, to use the TI-89, one of the first things I'll do is go into the mode. And what I want to do is, again, go down and I'm going to make sure that the angle is in degrees. which could be set to radians, degrees, or gradients. So we'll see, leave that at degrees, and I'd like the complex format to be polar. This will be helpful for my interpretation of the values that we're trying to determine here, because this, the, in a typical circuit analysis, degrees, uh, angles are in degrees, and when we want to find the amplitude and phase of the resulting voltages or currents, we'd like to see the results in polar form. So the first thing I'll do is store the source voltage phaser, which is 4 with an angle of 40 degrees, into a variable I'll call Vs. So there's 4 at an angle of 40 and we've got the units are degrees for our angles and I'll store that into V S. Next I'll store the impedance Z1 into the variable ZZ1 and that impedance is J and in the TI-89 that's I square root of minus 1. We need to multiply that times 2.5 and then I'll store that into ZZ1. Next, I'll store the impedance Z2, which is just a value of 6, into ZZ2. And then the final impedance, Z3, is negative J times 2, and I'll store that in ZZ3. So now I have Vs, ZZ1, ZZ2, and Z3 all stored. So now I want to implement, I want to solve this equation for V1. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll use the function 2 or F2 button, which will take me into a folder called Algebra. And then I'm going to come down to what appears to be 
the tenth element called complex. And if I go into complex, the top I'll see something called C solve. That's the function I want to use. Now the next thing I'll do using the variable names that I've defined, I'm going to enter this equation just as I see it here. There will be a new variable that I'm going to call v1 and that's the one that I'll ultimately instruct this function that I want to solve for. But I'm going to enter it just as I see it. v1 divided by z1 which is zz1 plus v1 divided by z2 which is zz2 plus v1 minus vs divided by z3 which is z3 and I'll say that's equal to zero. So let's do that. So there's v1 divided by zz1 and I'll add to that v1 divided by z2 and I'll add to that v1 minus vs and that quantity will be divided by z3 which I've called zz3 and I want all of that equal to zero so I'll use the equal sign set that equal to zero and then I need to tell the function the C solve function which variable I'm solving for so I'll include a comma and I'll tell it the variable name and that's v1 and then I can end the parentheses and if I hit enter we should see the solution here v1 has an amplitude of 10 point two eight nine nine and a phase of ninety nine point oh three six two degrees. Now one thing that I think is important in terms of checking your work if you use the navigation buttons on the calculator you can move upward and go take a look at your equation at, at, uh, that you just entered. So I just want to double check it. I can see that I get V1 divided by Z1 plus V1 divided by Z2 plus V1 minus Vs. I can scroll over. Divided by Z3. I've set that equal to zero. And I've asked to solve for V1. So that all looks good to me. So now I want to go back to my entry location. I'll clear that and now here's what we're going to do. We're going to say negative v1 and I'm going to divide that by z2 which I've scored, stored in zz2. Now if I hit return for this, at this point the calculator's knowledge of v1 is contained within my use of the complex solve function. So what I can do is use the navigation arrows, go back up and get this equation that tells me what v1 is supposed to be equal to. And the way I'll feed that back into this expression is through something called the, I think of it as the pipe function. It's this straight up line. So I'm going to next put in the line and now I'm going to tell it what v1 should be by using my previous result. So let me go up there. If I select that, press the enter button. Now we'll have V1 on that line. So when I compute that result, I'd like to then store the answer into a variable I'm going to call I. Now if I didn't make a mistake, we'll hit return and we should see the result. So there we go. Now we've taken V1, negative V1 over Z2. We used the pipe and told it then what V1 was by bringing down the result of our previous expression. And the result is now I has an amplitude of 1.71499 and a phase of negative 80.9638 degrees. So this current I flowing in that direction 
has an amplitude of 1.715 amps and a phase of negative 80.96 degrees. And that is an example of how we can use the TI-89 to solve this system of equations to solve for V1 and then determine I. Of course you can use any tool to carry out this math, but this is a very popular tool among students studying circuits, so I thought it'd be good to go through the way we use this tool for this particular circuit.